Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a talk about recording narrative sound as a solo filmmaker. Narrative filmmaking by nature is collaborative and working as a solo narrative filmmaker is an uphill battle. There's a reason as to why a film's credits look like this and not like this. When I do work as a solo filmmaker, it's often by necessity, not necessarily by choices, because I really want to make that project and I really want to get it completed. And I can usually only afford to bring in the actors. And that would either require me in raising funds to hire the crew or asking someone to work for free. While there is a possibility I could get someone to work for free, there's usually conflict in uh, scheduling issues. And at that point, I find it's just easier to do it myself. Out of every element of making a film by yourself, managing sound is inherently the hardest. I know some may think, well, put a microphone on top of the camera. That works well for documentary news, but for narrative, it's not always practical. If you're filming with a telephoto lens or your camera is just far away from the actor, you're not gonna get great audio. But there is another argument of lavalier microphones. Now, I would say that if you can purchase two lavalier microphones, uh, which comes with the quality of a good shotgun microphone, along with the radio equipment, you might be in a position to hire a sound recordist as it is. But then you also have the secondary issue of placing that lavalier microphone. It's not gonna be as feasible in some narrative circumstances if the guy has his top off or if the actress is wearing a low cut dress. There are several factors you need to account for that. So often it's gonna take us back to just using a shotgun mic. So I was working with a separate field mixer and recorder the field recorder to record my sound and the mixer, specifically a mix pre, to take advantage of its preamp to throttle the noise. But here's where I ran into my next problem, monitoring. I initially had one of these as a mixing bag, keep my audio equipment nice and close to the side of me, but there's a problem. If I'm focused on the camera, focus pulling, panning, or just watching the actors, I'm not monitoring the audio levels and that's gonna present a problem. I'm sure there are less expensive variations on the market, but I opted for a Mix Pre 6, which is a combination of the two previous devices. It also has a quarter inch thread on top of it so I can mount the mixer underneath my camera cage, mount that to the tripod, and then monitor and adjust the audio without the need of turning away from the camera or touching the camera itself. Clean audio, clear monitoring. But all in all, you're gonna to wanna to bring your audio monitoring device on top of or underneath your camera so you can monitor your audio levels as well as the composition. Because I guess to some extent, not looking at your audio levels while recording audio is somewhat like framing a shot without looking at the monitor. However, uh, it's obviously gonna be completely impractical to even think about manning the camera as well as a boom pole. So you need to look at investing in equipment that can hold the mic by itself. Obviously a microphone stand is a must, but it doesn't end there. You can find these handy mic clamps clip onto a variety of different services, but more importantly, I recommend everyone picking one of these up, a desk clamp with a boom arm. Uh, this has been completely invaluable for a lot of my content, and I'll show you why. I used the desk clamp in my short film, The One With The Ferris Wheel. The film takes place in a car, and I was able to clamp the mic onto the gear stick and position the mic straight up to the actor. And this allowed me to freely record audio while I sat behind the camera. So put the mic in the stand, Get that stand as close as possible to the actor and run through the shot to see where the audio levels are falling off before you even start recording. You're going to want to be looking at minus 12 to minus 15 dB for your actor's dialogue. However, there is a reason why that mic clamp on the gear stick works so well. And it's because I wrote that short specifically with that limitation in mind. And when you start a new project, it often feels like the sky is the limit. You're going to aim for the stars. And while there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that, I think it's also worth scrutinizing your expectations if you're operating at an extremely limited capacity. If I'm entering a new short and I know there's gonna be no budget, I'm gonna be doing everything myself again, I'll usually aim for a conversational piece because I know that's something that I can manage myself. So if you've been taking down these notes about mic placement and condensing your equipment, and then you write a short film and you've got like a David Fincher one shot, you're gonna run into issues. A few years ago, I set out to create an apocalyptic short film turned web series, which I very nearly completed. I had four out of five episodes online, ended up pulling the two. So there's just two online uh, to watch for some reason. Uh, but one of the things that could, could more or less kill the project was uh, I stupidly decided to change the end mid shoot. I done a Hobbit. It ruined the, 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 the short film. I've learned from it. But also something that kills my enjoyment for the project was the extended post-production time. And that was caused by sound. As I did want an elaborate story and I wanted the character to be moving and I wanted there to be action, we decided to film completely without sound. For the most part, it was quite literally myself and my buddy and I was gonna recreate everything in post. 
The efficiency of filming like this was unparalleled. We could film next to roads, in windy conditions, with planes flying nearby. It was fast and efficient. Replicating the sounds in post was not. So that was just several layers of audio for that short sequence. Uh, it is intensive, but I do think it is a practical way for solo filmmakers to create something a little bit more elaborative if you don't have a sound recordist at hand. However, just acknowledge it can get tedious. I probably would accept the fact that for myself, uh, in taking so long in doing dozens upon dozens of shots and sequences, it might have killed my love and enjoyment for the project. So that is me done for this video. Uh, Recording sound as a solo filmmaker for narrative stuff, not practical, can be tedious and tiring, but if you don't have an extra set of hands and you really want to create that content and you want to make sure it sounds really nice, hopefully these tips can help elevate your project to the next level. My name is Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials and I will catch you guys next time.